Hi everyone, welcome to this session. Uh, in this session, uh, we will be we will discuss the concept called money multiplier. Uh, this is an extended version of deposit multiplier. So, as we saw, as we discuss in the case of deposit multiplier, which is a simple multiplier, simple, very simple concept, uh, we have seen that uh, it does not take into all the other factors. In the deposit multiplier, uh, we take that is equal to 1 by the reciprocal of required reserve ratio. So, it does not take into account the behavior of the banking system, the behavior of the depositors, uh, the behavior of the uh, borrowers, that the general public. Uh, their behavior uh, is not taken into account. So, what we are going to do in this session by discussing multiplier, money multiplier, we are extending, we are uh, including other factors. Because of this reason, uh, money multiplier is also called extended multiplier or also called as complex multiplier because we are taking into account uh, other factors, other complex aspects of an economy. So, coming to this the money multiplier what we have seen in the previous session that means the monetary base which uh, the central bank influence that one we have seen that uh, monetary base is equal to currency plus reserve. From this through the uh, activities uh, through the process that we have seen we have discussed that the through the banking system and further we are going to add that through the general public. Uh, and the, to the and through the general public and the banking system this mbr this one uh, this distance this much is the mb that means c plus r from this the money supply is going to expand uh, is going to expand this much uh, that means uh, this distance is going to be uh, there right so that is the money supply so money supply or we you know we can also call it as uh, money stock so, from this that MB that is the high powered money from this how it increases to money supply to that the this much that the MS is equal to C plus D. So, that means the MB increases to MS some multiple times that means uh, MS if you do that MS divided by MB. Uh, so, it increases some by that means some multiple times. So, MS divided by MB that we, we get the to what extent that the uh, what multiple of MB is transformed into the MS. So, actually this M this division uh, tells us that what multiple of MB is transformed uh, into the MS. So, let us now derive this M. So, in order to derive this we include all the stakeholders. Uh, that means all the other players, the not only the central bank, central bank we include by looking at because central bank intervene here uh, in the form of fixing the setting the required reserve ratio and then uh, other players for example, the banking system, uh, banking system decide how much excess reserve uh, they want to keep that also we will include here and the general public they decide of their total deposit how much deposit uh, what is their desired amount uh, of uh, of the total deposit what is their desired amount of currency holdings all we need to bring together here so here uh, because the cb can control the monetary base better than it can control reserves it makes sense to link the money supply uh, to the monetary base through a relationship such as uh, the following that is ms is equal to m times monetary base. So, the money multiplier tells us how much the money supply changes uh, for a given change in the monetary base. So, the money multiplier reflects the effect on the money supply of other factors besides the monetary base. The first one is the currency uh, deposit ratio. So, currency deposit ratio means the depositors decision about their holdings of currency uh, and checkable deposits are one set of factors affecting money multiplier. Second one is the required reserve ratio, it, all, it also involves the reserve requirements imposed by the Fed on the banking system, whether they increase the reserve, uh, required reserve, whether they make it 10, 10, whether it is increased to 15 or whether it is reduced to 5. So, that also involves uh, affects the money multiplier that we are going to discuss here. 
Then comes the excess reserves. Uh, excess reserve means the bank's decisions about uh, excess reserve. It also affect the money multiplier. So let us formally derive the money multiplier formula here. The assumptions here is that uh, the desired level of currency C, the desired level of currency C and excess reserve ER grows proportionally with checkable deposits D. In other words, we assume that the ratios of these items to the checkable deposits are constants in equilibrium. So that means assume the desired holdings of currency C and ER are grows proportionally with the checkable deposits in D. So that means we assume that ratios of these items uh, are constants in equilibrium. So the one uh, we can see that uh, one ratio that is small letter C that means the total currency holding divided by the total deposit we are going to call it currency uh, deposit ratio. So the currency deposit ratio C small letter C uh, is going to is C by D. We can also rewrite uh, for simplification which we also use later on while deriving this money multiplier formula that means C is equal to C times D that means C small letter C is equal to C by D. This is another way of rewriting. Uh, this is only, uh, only we, we are doing uh, which will help us an easy derivation of this formula. Second one is small letters R we are going to write it as uh, recurred reserve ratio uh, recurred reserve ratio of the total deposit that the, the fraction of the total deposit that has to be kept with the central bank as recurred reserve. Right, that means recurred reserve. So RR we can also rewrite it actually small letter R times R D. That is a uh, uh, recurred reserve. Then another factor uh, is called excess reserve ratio. That is small letter E is going to of the total deposit. That is D, we can see that E R by D. That means of the total deposit, what fraction is kept as excess reserve? Excess reserve in the form of uh, wall cash. Uh, with the banking system itself or deposit with the central bank in addition beyond the uh, recurred reserve uh, that is uh, deposit with the central bank by the bank uh, in addition to the in excess of the recurred reserve we are going to call it uh, excess reserve this is the excess reserve ratio that is uh, er divided by uh, d so we can rewrite it like that that er is equal to uh, e times d so now let us we derive a formula that describe how the currency ratio desired by deposit is uh, that is this one currency ratio de desired by the deposit is and the excess ratio desired by the banking system and the desired cash reserve ratio desired by the central bank affect the money supply in the in an economy. So we are going to write it like starting the begin the derivation of the model of money supply with the equation that is MB is equal to R plus C uh, where the R we are going to expand uh, R is equal to recurred reserve ratio plus excess reserve ratio. So that means R is equal to RR plus ER. So in that way we are going to expand this definition of MB, MB is equal to R plus C. Now we are going to rewrite it MB is equal to R plus C means R means RR plus ER that means RR plus ER plus C. This is the expanded form of MB. So we write, rewrite the equation uh, specifying uh, each of them that uh, RR, RR, ER and C. Uh, we are rewriting expanding this MB equation. Uh, identity like RR as a R into D we already specified in the previous slide stated and ER is equal to E into D C currency means total currency means the ratio that the currency deposit ratio times total deposit. Uh, so the MB the expanded form of MB is equal to uh, R into D plus E into D plus uh, C into D uh, which we can write that. Uh, R plus E plus C times D that is MB right MB means uh, this is MB. So since we have uh, expanded MB as the ratios that means cash reserve ratio, excess reserve ratio and currency ratio, currency deposit ratio uh, times D that is uh, MB. 
uh, now dividing both sides of the equation by the term inside the parenthesis to get an expression linking d to m b, we can write that d is equal to inverse that 1 by r plus e plus c uh, times m b, right, the monetary base. Now, using the money supply definition, uh, money supply is a definition we have seen that m s is equal to c plus d. So, for this uh, de easy derivation of this formula, always remember that m b is equal to uh, c plus d and m s is equal to no, m b is equal to c plus r, uh, m s is equal to c plus uh, d, right, always remember this. So, in order to derive this, we let us also take into what is m s, because ultimately what we are going to do that uh, our multiplier is equal to m is equal to uh, m s divided by m b, right, that, that is what we are trying to achieve here, uh, find out here. So, using the money supply definition m s is equal to c plus d, uh, let us expand again this one, because m s is equal to c times uh, d plus d uh, is going to be 1 plus uh, c times d. So, substituting in this equation the expression for d from equation above, we have m s is equal to 1 plus c divided by r plus e plus c times m b. So, this is the money supply is going to be uh, 1 plus c divided by r plus e plus c times m b times m b is the total money supply. So, we know that m s means multiplier times, this is nothing but multiplier, multiple times uh, m b. So, we already seen that m s is equal to multiple times um, uh, m b that is c plus r multiple times c plus r uh, that is money supply. So, the money supply formula here is going to be 1 plus c divided by r plus uh, e plus c. So, here what we have done is uh, actually the m s we have this m s we have expanded it like this and then this d uh, we have substituted this with this, this d uh, we substituted here, uh, here uh, then we got it. So, accordingly uh, that means um, with this we substituted this d, d here. Uh, d this one is this one we substituted then m s we got in this way. So, accordingly we got we derived this uh, money multiplier formula here. So, what is the intuition behind the money multiplier formula here? So, this is the extended formula and the complex multiplier formula. So, here uh, let us discuss the intuition behind uh, money multiplier formula here by taking some illustrative example. Suppose the required reserve ratio is 10 percentage. So, let us re write it as 0 0.10 or 0 0.1 and currency in circulation take an example for example, currency in circulation is uh, 400 billion and checkable deposit D uh, is going to be is 800 uh, billion and we assume here that banks deserve to hold some amount of excess reserve uh, that we suppose we put it as uh, 0.8 billion. So, how, what we are going to do? We need to calculate now to calculate the money multiplier we need this value right because the formula that we found here is that the money multiplier formula is uh, our money multiplier formula is uh, 1 plus c divided by um, r plus uh, e plus c. So, we need to calculate all these ratios. So, we need to have the ratio c, uh, we need to have the, that the small letter, we also need to have the this one, this already given, uh, we need to calculate this e, excess reserve the ratio. Then we plug these values in this formula and then we are going to get the money multiplier. So, let us proceed with that. C here is the currency, total currency in circulation divided by the total deposit that means uh, uh, 400 divided by 800, uh, we are going to get small c is equal to uh, 0.5. The required reserve ratio is already given here, uh, it is 0.1. 
and how about the excess reserve uh, excess reserve uh, we can see here the excess reserve is going to be uh, 0 0.8 billion divided by 800 billion uh, this is the uh, excess uh, reserve that the e a ratio the e the ratio e is going to be 0 0.001 so plugging this value the resulting all this value the resulting value of the money multiplier is going to be uh, this that means exactly applying this formula so we can see that uh, this divided by this plus this plus this and finally we are going to get uh, money multiplier is going to be uh, 2.5 that is the money multiplier we got so compare this one with the deposit multiplier we, before we expand this one uh, multiplier compare this one with the symbol deposit multiplier if you had uh, used only the symbol deposit multiplier we, we would have got the multiplier the symbol deposit multiplier is going to be 10 was 10 but here that is the deposit multiplier deposit multiplier we got 10 but the money multiplier we got here is uh, 2.5 because we are you can now is very clear to you i am sure uh, and we have incorporated uh, the currency recurve reserve ratio that is the central bank's uh, desired activity currency in circulation uh, that is the desired holding of currency by the public uh, is the liquidity preference as well which can change over time but he, we assume that is remaining constant uh, similarly the excess reserve it also a function of the banking system so because of this uh, we can see that uh, it became it's not the multiplier is not 10 it became uh, 2.5 so what does this tell actually the money multiplier of 2.5 tells us that a one dollar increase in the monetary base leads to a 2.50 increase in the money supply that is the m1 uh, money supply definition we have used here now let us see that so how money supply changes what are the money supply responses uh, in changes in the factors the factors that we discuss suppose the changes is uh, r the required reserve ratio which is set by the central bank so is part of monetary policy and the monetary policy the central bank decide how much is the required reserve ratio so if r increases that means the central bank increases the required reserve ratio that means bank must contract their loans they cannot give large amount of loans suppose uh, initially when we said that 10 percentage is the required reserve ratio when a bank get 100 as the deposit uh, they can lend only 90 as the uh, loan right they can give 90 as the loan but uh, if they increase it suppose if they increase this uh, reserve ratio for example 20 percentage uh, recurve reserve ratio is going to be 20 percentage so instead of 90 they can give only 80 as the loan so what we what is the meaning here so that means causing a decline in the deposits and hence the money supply so the reduced money supply relative to mb indicates that money plus the multiplier has declined as well so if the aim of the central bank is to reduce the money supply in the economy suppose if they want to reduce the money supply and if they see that economy is in a good condition there is sufficient investment in, in the economy but and also they say that the economy is confronting with the inflation and at that time if the economic central bank decide that they are going to uh, follow a contractionary monetary policy instead of an expansionary monetary policy that means contractionary monetary policy they want to reduce the money supply uh, in the economy so accordingly one of the tool of monetary policy here is going to be the change in r they will be increasing the r as a part of contractionary monetary policy then from this formula you can see that the money supply has declined when they increase the uh, reserve ratio recurve reserve ratio the money supply is going to decline that is one so suppose if you change put a plug again value instead of 10 percentage we are going to make 15 percentage then we can see that the money print multiplier is going to become uh, 2.3 uh, from 2.5 uh, where we have seen before the money multiplier and the money supply so from this illustration we can see that money multiplier and the money supply are negatively related to the required reserve ratio that means cash reserve ratio then moving to another factor 
uh, that we found in our formula that is changes in R. Uh, what happens to M money multiplier when the depositors behavior causes C to increase? So that means uh, when checkable deposits are being converted into currency and there is a switch from a component of the money supply that undergoes a multiple expansion to one that does not. So here uh, taking an illustrative example suppose that C rises from uh, 0 0.50 to 0 0.75. So that means here from this we can say that the money multiplier then falls uh, from 2.5 to it become from 2.5 to it become 2.06. So from this uh, what we can see the money multiplier and the money supply are again negatively related to the currency ratio and how the currency ratio can increase. So here we have seen that uh, from our illustrative example we have written here that uh, it has increased from 0 0.5 to 0 0.75 and this is possible uh, if there is an increased uncertainty in the economy uh, for example some kind of war a way, an economy a country expecting anticipating that uh, some kind of crisis or a kind of war is going to happen or when they see that there is an increase in uncertainty in the economy, people uh, suppose they lose trust with the banking system, suppose there is a banking crisis as well and then suppose what happened that uh, people be believe that if they deposit their money in the banking system, they are not going to get it back, suppose there is some multiple banking crisis, a banking failure and as a result uh, what we can say that the demand for money increases, the liquidity preference increases. When the liquidity preference increases may be due to several factors in including uh, fear of war, uncertainty, problem with the banking system, some external factors and all, uh, all this because of this when the C increases uh, then we can say that the multiple expansion of the money multiplier value also decreases and as a result the multiple expansion. Uh, of money supply that the increase in money supply also negatively get affected. Then the third factor that is the excess reserve when bank increase their holdings of excess reserves relative to checkable deposits banks will contract their loans causing a decline in the level of checkable deposit and then a decline in the money supply and the money multiplier will fall here. So again putting some values suppose E rises from 0 0.001 to 0 0.005 uh, we can say that suppose there is an increase in excess reserve then accordingly plugging these values in our formula we are going to get the money multiplier is going to be 2.48 that is the money multiplier that we are going to get. So that means the money multiplier and the money supply are negatively related to the excess reserve ratio E. So from this uh, it is actually very important factor that the excess reserve uh, what we can see that if a central bank uh, suppose if, if they want to increase the money supply or if they want to influence when, whenever they want to influence the money supply they cannot simply rely on the required reserve ratio, uh, ratio instead they also need to look at what is the general economic condition, what is the uh, trust of general public, what is their liquidity preference what is their trust with the banking system or whether how much uh, currency they prefer to keep with themselves. In, a, in addition they also need to look into uh, the banking conditions that means uh, how much excess reserve ratio, excess, excess reserve the banking system would like to hold. So about the excess reserve you know that it also depends on the with the liquidity management in the of their respective bank banking system. So if as a all this as a macro level suppose if we see that uh, in their banking system they anticipate that there is banking crisis is going to happen uh, maybe a rumor is going to happen that bank is going to fail then if they anticipate that a bank run is going to happen then what they are going to do they will be going to increase the excess reserve 
right uh, this is actually also due to the point that we discussed in the previous class that the asymmetric information problem uh, if the asymmetric information problem is very high in the economy or the uncertainty is very high then accordingly we can see that uh, the bank management is going to keep more excess reserve with them that is one plus if they find that there is limited uh, there is uh, limited use or there is uh, reduced use of their resources they are, they are not finding good lending opportunity they are not able to find a uh, good uh, investment opportunity for example good high low risk uh, borrowers if they are not finding if they are not finding a uh, good investment opportunity then also they will be keeping a uh, excess reserve with them so accordingly we can say that increase in excess reserve also affect the money multiplier uh, so to summarize uh, in this session we have discussed how to derive uh, money multiplier formula and then how to what are the factors affecting money multiplier formula uh, in the next session uh, we are going to expand uh, whatever we have discussed in the previous sessions uh, by discussing the monetary policy and what are the tools of monetary policy and how do they uh, what are the what are the target variables etc all we are going to uh, discuss in the next session and thank you thank you so much for watching this video and see you in the next session thank you